Welcome back guys to Debris Day. Today on Debris Day, it's the PCBs that we're gonna solder for the lithium ion batteries that we recovered in the video up here somewhere. And then we're gonna show you on the next video how we connect those into our solar power setup. Let's go guys. So guys, let's talk about the uh, Jehu Garcia PCB boards and they're here. Um, what we have on here, this is version 1.3. I don't know if you can see that down there. This is, I don't know if you can see that down there, but this is um, the power module version 1.3 for 18650, so for a seven string set of cells. Um, on top here, you've got all of the positives. On the bottom here, you've got all of the negatives. Um, and you get it as a kit form. So you get the PCB, um, you get some of these holders for cells. That's a, a four holder there. And here is a, a three cell holder. You get some fuses, um, these little uh, five amp fuses. I don't know if you can see they're tiny. We'll be soldering those in a little bit. Um, you get some standoffs. Now these will be electrified. Uh, certainly the two front ones will be electrified, the back ones won't, but you use these to stack many of these boards, which you'll see. Um, you get the connectors um, for the ribbon wire, which is here. So you get a ribbon wire and the connectors. Um, and you get a couple of connectors to connect the boards up. These are the XT60 connectors, or these are uh, connectors which you'll see we can put onto the boards, um, and these little connectors, you can connect wires directly onto them. So, um, that's what you get in the kit. If you remember, we've got the park size soldering iron, which we reviewed on the last video. Um, oh look, there's my, my uh, lens case. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take you through soldering this up, and I repeat, I've not done any soldering before in my life, so this is gonna be a bit of an experiment. Um, we're gonna solder up the board, um, then we're gonna put some cells into that board, and then once we've done that, we're gonna check the, uh, the volts on that board and see where we are. This should be a 24 volt version. Okay, let's go, guys. So uh, it's really important with the solder, you do get some solder with the uh, Parkside soldering iron, um, but it doesn't have um, the flux included in it. So I went on to uh, Amazon and I purchased this, uh, this solder here, which has got flux included in it. Um, that just makes it a lot easier for, for, welding, for welding, for soldering. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm now gonna solder up uh, this side of the board um, with that connector in there. So uh, that iron's on 370. I did have it at 350, but it isn't quite enough. Um, so we're going to solder each of these uh, these pins. So let's start here. So we've got them all soldered. And what we'll do, we'll do a continuity test just to make sure they're all working. The way we do that, we take out our wonderful multimeter and we'll do a continuity test, which is the BP test. Um, take the positive and negative ends. We should hear a beep if it's working. So we'll do a test across each of these connections. Okay, that's all soldered, and you can see I've just tested them all. It's not the prettiest of solders, but it does work. Okay, let's move on to the next bit, which is the fuse, which goes here. Okay, the five amp fuses are really, really tiny. So you need to put some solder on uh, the minus sign there, present the fuse, then solder it from that side to that side. Let's do that. Okay, I've got a set of tweezers here, which we're gonna to use to pick up one of these fuses and put it onto the board. It's so tiny. That's where the solder is. Just present the fuse, turn these upside down, it'll be easier.
so the fuse is on. Let's do a quick continuity test across there. That's all working. Next, what we have to connect up are the four and three cell connectors. So turn the board over. Uh, on here, you may not be able to see, but there's a positive on the top and a negative at the bottom. It aligns with the board, which has positive at the top and negative at the bottom. They all sit on there, we turn them over and we solder on each of these pins. You did 450 degrees, hot as it will go, decent bit of solder. Let's solder all of these pins. You should be able to feel them. Right, so that's all of those done. Doesn't take long. So we've got the fuse in. Um, we've got our unit ready to receive the cells. I'll just get some cells and pop those in. So here are my cells. Uh, various milliamps. We're trying to get the milliamps uh, similar. There's something called repacker.com which you can use to, to get the cells uh, similar. So um, positive and negative. Uh, let's put one in and just check the voltage this time. They should be about 4.11, 4.10, 11 volts. 4.15 on that one. Let's check the next one. 4.15. I'll just bring the multimeter in so you can see what I'm doing. If I pop it there, you can see. Last one. 4.14. So they all uh, check out. Let's turn it over. I like to do a check on this side as well, um, just to make sure that these connections work. So I click on the silver bit here and silver bit here. 4.4, so that means that all the connections are working really well across across the board. Um, let's do a final check. Let's check uh, up it to 200 volts or up to 200 volts. Check the end. And as you can see, if I lift this up so you can see, we are getting 29 volts across that. So 20, meant to be a 24 pack, but if you think about it, 4, 8, 16, 24, 28, and these are 4.1, so that makes it 29, just over 29 volts pack. So it's a 7S um, pack, and now we can do is make some more of these up and then stack them. So here's another one I made earlier. Uh, we'll then put the, uh, the risers on them and stack them together. And this will then form uh, an entire stack of cells and make our new battery. So let's do that. So if you can remember, we had all of these uh, these brass uh, risers, and we're now going to stack these. Um, this is going to be the bottom one. So I'm going to put two at the front, and then connect those up. So just twizzle them around. Thing to know is on the top board there'll be the XT60 connector, which is this connector here. Um, that'll use we'll use that to connect to other boards, and we can use it to uh, to put the load on. So for now, um, I need to do the other side. Put these on. These are the standoffs. And I need a few more. That's my first board. Second board goes on top. As you can see, I'll just show you the side of that. I'll put some more standoffs on there. And then we can use a ribbon cable, which I'm not going to do just yet, but use a ribbon cable to connect all of these together, ready for the BMS, which will be seen right on the very top. And just to show you that uh, the pegs are electrified, 
Um, if I go to the front pegs here, this one and this one, you can see we get 29 volts. Um, obviously with the pack, um, there's going to be a certain amount of milliamp hours and each one of these cells is about 2000 milliamp hours, so about 1400 uh, milliamp hours um, per cell and there's going to be several. That's about 40 amp hours I believe it is. I'll do some calculations and work that out. Um, I'm going to have 10 of these stacked uh, with a BMS on top. I've got a separate uh, video which I'm going to make for the BMS on top but I'll keep making these um, and we'll stack them up. So guys I hope you found this useful. Uh, this is the J.U. Garcia's uh, PCBs for the 18650 battery cells that we recovered in the other video. Um, this is the next stage of pulling all of those uh, cells together, putting them into these boards and stacking those boards up. Um, I'll have to work out at the end what size milliamp hours this is going to be, but considering the size of the uh, lead acid battery, which is which is pretty big, that's at least like uh, sort of between 12 and uh, 18 inches long, um, and depth is again is about 12 inches. This is going to be a lot smaller footprint, but hopefully give more power. Um, I'm going to do another video on the BMS construction because that sits on the top, and that's the battery management system. And what that does is it stops overloading the batteries, so they they balance themselves out. Once we've done that, the week after then, we're going to install this into our solar power setup. Anyway guys, that's it for this week. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you next week on Dubri's Day. Cheers guys. Bye for now.